Shantiniketan. Conceived by Rabindranath Tagore as an environment for creative thought and expression. Where children and artists could live in close touch with nature, local traditions and themselves. Tagore wrote, Art is not a gorgeous sepulchre. It belongs to the procession of life, making constant adjustment along its path of pilgrimage to a future which is as different from the past as the tree from the seed. Mahatma Gandhi was as forward-looking as Tagore in his nationalist cultural ideals. I want the cultures of all lands to be blown about my house as freely as possible, but I refuse to be blown off my feet by any. This community of interests created a bond of mutual affection and respect between the artist and the political philosopher, which was strengthened rather than harmed by their well-known differences. Atul Dodia's painting of 1999 commemorates this bond. Though Gandhi claimed not to understand art at all, he himself has been a subject of ceaseless interest for artists. Nandalal Bose's Dandi March makes him an icon. Whereas Atul Dodia shows him moments before the historic breaking of the sword law as one man amongst many. I am not a seer, rishi or a philosopher of non-violence, Gandhi said. I am only an artist of non-violence. <laughs> Indeed, only an artist could have created a symbol of uncommon power out of common salt, or the humble charka. The whole nation spun, producing a yarn strong enough to bind its entire people together in the fight for freedom. For Gandhi, even headgear was not just that. It had to be an assertion of national identity. He rejected many possibilities before evolving the Gandhi cap, which soon became another nationalist symbol. Haripur, where a village was set up for the Indian National Congress of 1938. Gandhiji was keenly aware of the significant role art could play in the national culture. He invited Nandalal Bose to cover the entire area of the Haripur village with works of art. Bose made 83 paintings depicting the lives of common people. He used paper pasted on cheap straw board and locally ground colors for these works, known today as the Haripur posters. Nandalal Bose's work at Haripur had more than fulfilled Gandhi's expectations. It is a moot point whether he would have appreciated all the work Bose was doing, impelled though it was by the urge to evolve an indigenous language of art. Outside Shantiniketan, other artists like Ravi Varma were involved in their own projects of indigenization. Ravi Verma 
used to create images rooted in indigenous styles and Indian mythology. While Amrita Shergil, trained in Europe, was drawing upon Indian visual traditions to produce images of rural India. Jamini Roy had begun by painting rural themes in a romanticized style using oils. By the 1920s, he was looking to folk traditions like the Kaligat paintings to indigenize his work and bring it closer to the people. His forms and compositions now became simpler, his contours bold and his narratives familiar. He gave up oils in favor of colors made locally from rock dust, mixed with the glue of tamarind seeds, mercury powder, alluvial mud, indigo, common chalk and lamp black. In Shantiniketan, the tradition of public art has continued to this day. For Binod Bihari Mukherjee, a student of Nandalal Bose, oils were taboo and nature an endless source of inspiration. Though his paintings expressed only the personal, his ambitious Hindi Bhavan mural covering three large walls projected a Gandhian vision of India. Here, under the influence of its bhakti saints, the country appears to be a pageant of human activity, moving through time and space, covering the crafts and trades of every caste, creed and faith. Thresher by Ram Kinkar Bech, an impassioned sculptor who filled the space around him with monumental figures. He strove to capture in clay and cement the vitality, rhythms and ruggedness of rural life. Though this student of Nandalal Bose often chose to paint in oils, students in Shantaniketan, now as then, are trained to make and use earth colours. Crafts too are an important part of the training, erasing the line between the artist and the artisan. The real impact of Gandhi on the Indian art and cultural scene says K.G. Subramanian, comes from his having refocused the eyes of culture workers on the widespread artisan tradition, its enormous repertory of images and skills, its refreshing local flavor. Subramanian has drawn upon many traditions of folk, popular and modernist art to arrive at his own pictorial language. His narratives speak through gesture and mime, interspersed with decorative elements. The Indian artist, he says, exults in the visual world with a knowledge of its variety, impermanence and changeability. Nature enters Subramanian's work in stylized forms or wittily as frisky animals in pen and brush drawings. 
With independence, the Charkha, Gandhiji's emblem of village India, gave way to the Ashok Chakra, a universal symbol of peace. Though Gandhiji continued to be a reference point for post-independence artists like Akbar Padamsi, it was Nehru's vision of India as a player in the international arena to which their creativity responded in full and abundant measure. Nehru's India was going to be forged by steel plants and giant dams. These days the biggest temple and mosque and Gurdwara is the place where man works for the good of mankind. Which place can be greater than this? The Bhakra Nangal. Corbusier was commissioned to create a capital for Punjab and Chandigarh was born. Nehru said, the site chosen makes the new city symbolic of the freedom of India, unfettered by the traditions of the past, an expression of the nation's faith in the future. One after the other rose Nehru's temples of the future, the Bhaba Atomic Research Center, the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, headed by Homi Bhabha, a man of culture who made the institute a patron of modern art. Here science research coexisted with exciting explorations in art. M.F. Hussain's mural displays his energetic response to the contemporary world through strong lines, vibrant colors and accessible imagery. Hussein became the quintessential artist of the Nehruvian era. A painter of the people and for the people, his prolificity was that of nature itself, vivid and unstoppable. artists of this generation came together for a brief while as the Progressive Artists Group convened by Francis Newton Souza. Death of a Pope Souza's work, more than anyone else's, shows the impatience of this generation with old themes and forms of expression coupled with a strong desire to shock. Krishan Khanna's work provides a critique of the grimmer aspects of modern life. Strongly figurative in mood, it is informed by deeply felt social concerns.
Sudhir Patwardhan says, Pandit Nehru's ideas and work regarding the industrialization and modernization of post-independence India, combined with the value he placed on secularism, were the very context in which my generation grew up. They formed the basis of our own development and we took them for granted. Figures dominate Patwardhan's work, which bears an affinity with socialist realism. He has even painted in the open to allow people into the process of painting. He imparts dignity, even monumentality, to the industrial worker, the manual labourer and the woman. Mayday accident. A large canvas that foregrounds the irony of the industrial worker's existence. Navjot, like other artists today, has made several moves away from easel painting and the high ground of modernism. recent work, the result of a collaboration with the woodcarvers of Bastar, constitutes a curious return to the Gandhian ideal of acknowledging the Indian artisan. Vivan Sundaram says, in the 90s, my art practice dismantles the grand easel picture frame by working on handmade paper. My most recent practice shifts the emphasis from signature, from style, to the more prosaic use of the hand, where different craft skills play an important part. Structures of memory, modern Bengal. The site-specific installation Sundaram did in the Darbar Hall of the Victoria Memorial in Calcutta in 1998 to celebrate 50 years of Indian independence. During this half century, Indian artists have journeyed with the nation from the indigenous modernism of Mahatma Gandhi to the international modernism of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru to arrive at a point today when every signpost along the way is allowed to show its mark. In Sundaram's installation, pre-modern and proto-modern artisan skills cohabit with industrial and electronic manufacture. It is only apt that this all-inclusive work should stand under a dome inscribed with the words encompassing Rabindranath Tagore's vision of history and creativity. He says, that is best. Every age does not bring its own end, does not complete its song. It leaves behind dissatisfied sighs in the wind.